Ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, today I would like to tell you about an experiment which was supposed to show the impact of high temperatures on the microscopic appearance of fragments of ceramic vessels. The history of mankind is inextricably linked with the use of fire. Paradoxically, their destructive power often gives archaeologists a better look at the past of a given community and allows them to capture a petrified picture of the past. Thanks to this, among the layers created over several hundred years, we are able to recognize the traces of events taking place during several dozen dramatic minutes. However, there are situations in which the characteristic fire layers are not able to survive to our times. In such a case, a certain way to detect the presence of fire may be the analysis of frequently occurring categories of artifacts, which were also affected by high temperatures. While research on the effects of fire on the bone and flint transformation is quite well developed, there is a lack of such research regarding pottery. To delve deeper into this topic, I conducted the following experimental study. The source base for the experiment were pottery from the fortified settlement in Maszkowice, in Western Carpathians in Poland. Nine samples, representing the time period from the Early Bronze Age to the Late Latin period and assigned to different technological classes, were selected for an experiment. After subjecting them to a standard description along with the rest of the archaeological material, all samples were photographed from both sides and then they were divided into four parts, each of which was weighted to the nearest hundred of gram. In cooperation with geoarchaeologists, the pottery pieces from each technological group were examined before and after secondary burning in terms of the type and size of the temper, as well as minerals present in ceramics by analyzing the changes that the individual subsamples underwent during each of the three experiments, several recurring trends can be easily seen. They allowed to define four stages of secondary burnout of ceramics, which were later used to analyze artifacts from two early Bronze Age buildings. Generally, it can be assumed that fires leaves behind several categories of traces at the site. The first of them, the one I'm most interested in, are artifacts with burn marks. The second, context clearly indicating the action of fire, such as charred structural elements or sediments burnt in situ. And the third one, charred plant remains which seems to be charred in especially severe conditions. Each of these categories can be treated as proxy data for concluding about fires. It should be noted, however, that their confrontation with each other requires appropriate field research standard. For the experiment, the two-segmented barrier kiln was used, and temperature measurements were continuous thanks to an electronic measuring device with a thermocouple. The weather that day was cloudy and windy with light intermittent rain. Based on the published studies on the experimental fire of wooden buildings, three models were defined describing the conditions that could result in secondary burning of ceramics. During the experiments, to recreate subsequent scenarios, Three pottery fragments were used, while the fourth subsample remained as reference specimen. The first test simulated the conditions during a fire inside the building in its lower part. Experimental studies show that the temperature in this part of a burning wooden house reaches around 700 to 715 centigrade and maintains at this level during the first phase of the fire, I for about 20 minutes depending on the weather conditions and the amount of available fuel. After recreating this stage of the fire, the kiln was gradually cooled down to approximately 500 centigrade, and then this temperature was maintained for the next 20 minutes. After 5 minutes from the start of the experiments, temperature measurements were made every half a minute. This experiment resulted in clearly noticeable changes in the appearance of the artifacts. Due to the access to oxygen, the carbon contained in ceramics burned out would consequently change its color to light cream. It is worth noting that only the margins of the shirts were oxidized. Although it may be difficult to separate the secondarily oxidized shirts from those originally fired in oxidative conditions, the diagnostic feature for the former ones is the uniformly bright color of both surfaces and structures. Another recurring and macroscopically observable trend 
was the change in the color of the Muscovite. In the temperatures above 700 centigrade, it changed from silver to gold. This phenomenon occurs so repetitively that it can be considered as a kind of determinant of secondary contact with a very high temperatures. As a final note to this experiment, it is worth mentioning the absence of structural changes in the shards. The second experiment was aimed at recreating the conditions in the upper parts of the building, where during the most violent and hot minutes in the initial phase of the roof fire, the highest temperatures were reached, which could even exceed 1000 centigrade. Starting at 700 centigrade, we heated the kiln to around 1000 centigrade and tried to keep it at the level for 5 minutes. Over the next 10 minutes or less, the kiln was cooled down to just over 500 centigrade. The temperatures were measured every half minute. The temperature reached in this experiment undoubtedly caused the largest and most effective changes in the appearance of the ceramics. First of all, there was a significant deformation of the shirts, as well as the increase of the dimensions. For example, in the case of one of the kitchenware, the thickness of the shirts was increased by as much as 50%. Strong cracks in both surfaces are easily noticeable, and in a few cases also the lamination in the thickness of the pottery parallel to its surfaces. The porosity of the shirts increased also significantly. Each sample underwent strong oxidation, which changed their color to the range from light cream to brick red. What's interesting in the case of two technological groups, which are characterized by oxidative firing throughout their thickness, a secondary reduction was observed in the core shirts. In most cases, there was a change in the color of the Muscovite. The exception was the subsample presented on the picture in which the amount of Muscovite was significantly reduced. Probably it was completely melted. The few remaining Muscovite grains are still silver in color. Exposure of the pottery to the temperatures in excess of 1000 centigrade revealed components of the temper that were not visible before secondary burning. In pottery of two subsequent groups, lumps of clay were observed, which are the remains of inaccurate mixing of the ceramic mass in the production process. A very interesting observation concerns the quartz grain present in the temper. In many cases, they swelled and exploded, destroying the surrounding ceramic cake and causing crust resembling bubbles and craters. The shirts of another technological group contained elements resembling ferruginous minerals in the temper, looking like slag particles after firing. Shirts that were exposed to conditions simulated by these experiments are most often defined by archaeologists as secondary burnt, because it is easiest to isolate them without conducting more detailed analysis. They are also the best indicators of the occurrence of a fire because they could not change in such a way under other conditions. Finally, the third experiment served to create the conditions in which pieces of pottery were trampled into the house floor in the closest vicinity of the hearth or other source of high temperature. The temperature in such a place should not exceed that obtained in the fire. In addition, due to the layer of soil covering the shards, reduction firing could be expected. Selected fragments were placed in a kiln in the ceramic vessels filled with a soil, which covered the fragments with a layer of several centimeters. Then the temperature was maintained at about 500 centigrade for an hour. Due to the stable prof firing profile, its measurements were made every five minutes. In this case, it turns out that the temperature of about 500 centigrade combined with the reductive atmosphere is too low to affect the macroscopic appearance of the pottery. There are no differences in color or structure between the reference and burnt samples. In this experiment, the influence of temperature was additionally reduced by a layer of earth, which, acting as an insulator, was dried to the depth of a few centimeters. The only observable change was a slight decrease in the wave of the pottery due to the loss of the chemical water. This phenomenon, unfortunately impossible to use in macroscopic evaluation, applies to a greater or lesser extent to all tests and samples.
A positive correlation can be found between the maximum temperature obtained during the experiment and the weight loss. In reducing firing by 500 centigrees, the wave of the shirt decreased by 2%, which is due to the contact with open fire in the temperature of 700 to 1000 centigrees. Most of the shirts reduced their wave by about 6 to 10%. However, it is difficult to establish the relationship between the technology of making the vessels and changes in the wave of their fragments. This problem is well illustrated by the case of two pottery wares, which are essentially opposites in the terms of technology. In short, the first of them was probably primarily fired at low temperature, while the second one at higher temperature. Despite this, the extent of wave loss is almost identical for both of them. This means that the experiment does not confirm that the temperature of the primary firing affects how the shirt reacts to secondary burning. The last recurring feature in case of all experiments and all pottery wares is an increase in the hardness of the shirts. At the moment, it is difficult to explain the nature of the process that is responsible for this. An observable, although relative and difficult to measure, manifestation of this tendency is a clear change in the timber of the sand between the reference fragments and the reburned fragments. The results of these experiments were used to determine the degree of burnout of pottery fragments found during the examination of two buildings from the early Bronze Age from the site in Maszkowice. Using the kernel analysis, a kind of thermal map of temperatures prevailing at the site during the fire was obtained. It can be concluded that in the case of one of the buildings, the highest values on this temperature map coincide with the occurrence of burnt sailing debris, which collapsed as a result of the fire. However, much more interesting observations is that the building in which almost no traces of fire, like charred wood, clay pieces, burnt layers were found, provides a larger number of burnt fragments of pottery than the structure in which the traces of fire were evident and easy to grasp. Moreover, these results coincide almost perfectly with the results of later archaeobotanical analyses. The concentrations of ceramics with a higher degree of fire damage overlap with the archaeobotanical assemblages which seem to be charred in particularly several conditions. Thus, two independent methods of source analysis brought very similar results and mutually confirmed the validity of their applications. Finally, it is worth presenting in point some of the most important conclusions resulting from conducted experiment. 1. As a result of high temperature, Muscovite changed color from silver to gold. 2. If the fragments of ceramics are covered with even a thin layer of soil, they are effectively protected against high temperatures above the sediment. 3. In order for the pottery to crack, the laminate increased its volume and form bubbles and deformations, a very high temperature is needed, unattainable in everyday practices and occurring only in the initial phase of the catastrophic fire events. 4. Secondary burning may reveal components in the ceramics that were not visible in the unburned fragments. 5. Each secondary firing, regardless of the temperature, results in decrease in the wave of the ceramic due to the loss of chemical water. And 6. While ceramics originally fired with oxygen tend to be oxidized on one side, those that have been oxidized as a result of secondary burning have light colors on both sides and at the cross sections. A chance to obtain new data and at the same time to verify the already collected information are physical examination, for example X-rays or analysis of changes in the crystal lattice of multiform quartz. Although this study found no relationship between the temperature of the primary firing and changes in the secondary burn shirts, the evaluation of the former was based only on macroscopically observable characteristics. The aforementioned physical test, combined with the analysis of pottery, thin section will allow for a more clear estimation of the temperature of the original firing of the vessels subjected to the experiments. Thank you very much for your attention and now feel free to ask a question. Thank you.